Hi, I'm Elizabeth at The Literary Princess, and today I'm talking about my top 10 Victorian novels. So back in 2020 for Victober, I did a blog post on my top six Victorian novels, and I decided to do an update because things have changed a little bit. Now, five of them are still the same, but orders have shifted and one has been knocked off and there are so many other new ones that I I'm like no I need that on here sir I am gonna have to ask you to step away from the camera tripod this naughty bean was doing unauthorized bad boy activities and now he's in mama jail you're in mama jail tough luck oh, you're such a brat Ow. Anyway, so I decided it needs to be top 10 now. We've got one that's been knocked off. We have shifting orders of things and it's a good time for an update. So I'm going to, so the order is a little bit strange. I've mostly tried to go in the order that I just like it best, except for the book that is in number 10 and we'll talk about that in a minute. So let's just get going. The first book that I have is like, technically I like it more than some other ones on this list. And I'm only putting it in 10 because technically it's not Victorian. And you're probably like, Elizabeth, it's a list of Victorian books. What do you mean? But I will explain myself. So this is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And this book, as the novel as we know it, was published in, I believe, 1905. So that is firmly out of the Victorian era. It is Edwardian. However, the original short story that it was published as was published in 1887, which is Victorian. And then it was adapted for a play and then Burnett um, expanded into the novel. So I would say this is a very Victorian story and it's definitely set in the Victorian era. It feels very Victorian. It's Victorian. But since it's not technically Victorian, I'm putting it at spot number, number 10, even though it was originally in spot number two in my old list. Um, this is my favorite children's book. If you don't know, A Little Princess tells the story of Sarah Crewe whose father was a wealthy man living in India. He then sends her to a boarding school in England where she is pampered and made much of. However, her father dies and leaves her apparently with no fortune. So the headmistress of the school turns her into a servant. It's a Cinderella story. I adore it. It's been my favorite since I was a child. I had a doll named Sarah because of this book. <laughs> I love it. So yes, one of my favorite books ever. Technically, technically Victorian and technically not Victorian. It's kind of in a weird liminal space. I usually define it as Victorian. I can see why other people would not since the novel's publication date is 1905. All right, so next up we have Hard Times by Charles Dickens. So, oh, another thing about this list I should tell you, I limited myself to one book per author and I have recently reread Hard Times, whereas I haven't recently reread some of Dickens' others. So this is something that could change a bit, but I think Hard Times is such a fantastic novel. One of Dickens' tightest novels, Great characterization, great plot pacing, all in a little package. It's great. This tells the story of Thomas Gradgrind, who is the superintendent of a school in the industrial city of Coketown. And he is trying to raise his children as well as the children at his school by only knowing facts. They do not consider emotions or imagination. It's just facts and it backfires, backfires miserably. Of course it does. <laughs> but I love this book. I think it's just, like I said, it's just so tight. 
Dickens is usually very sprawling and he's just not in this one and I think it's so great. In spot number eight, we have The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot. And so if you know me, you may know I have a very difficult relationship with George Eliot, <laughs> but I actually really love The Mill on the Floss. I first read this when I was 14 years old and I gave it five stars, or I would have if I had a rating system when I was 14, which I did not. But I recently reread it and I still really love it but I have some more issues now <laughs> with it than I did when I was a kid. But this is the story of Maggie Tulliver, who is a young girl growing up at her father's mill, and she just can't seem to do anything right. She doesn't want to be the conventional type of young lady. She wants to get an education, but because she's a girl, she's not given one, and her brother Tom is mean to her, and he's such a dick but so this follows her from childhood into young adulthood and there's love there's tragedy honestly i adore it i just there was that her childhood takes a little bit too long to get through i would have liked more time with her as an adult and there are certain issues with the ending um Katie from Books and Things really dislikes this book because of its ending and I can see why. <laughs> I'm not a huge fan of the ending either but I do overall really love this story and I love Maggie as a character and I love hating Tom. It's really fun. <laughs> In spot number seven we have a book that I had not read at the time of making the previous list. This is Moths by Weta. This is the story of Vera Herbert, who comes to join her mother, Lady Dolly, in France to live after being away from her for most of her life. And Lady Dolly is a very frivolous, worldly woman who cares about looks, money, and status, whereas Vera is very earnest and cares more about emotions, doesn't care about money, doesn't care about status. And these two end up clashing when a Russian prince wants to marry Vier and Vier hates him because he's a bad person. So this is the story of that and of Vier's romance with an opera singer who she is in love with. And honestly, this is just beautiful and so much fun. It's melodramatic. It's a good time. Lady Dolly is such a great character. It's so fun. I've talked about this kind of extensively before in one of my underrated Victorian recommendation videos, but yes, I adore this. Next up in spot number six, we have another one that I had not read at the time of writing the original blog post. This is Miss March Banks by Margaret Oliphant. I have talked about Oliphant extensively. I adore her. Um, Miss Marchbanks follows Lucilla Marchbanks as she returns home from school to her town of Carlingford and tries to take the lead in society and make it into what she believes society should be. It's funny. Lucilla's hilarious. Oliphant's a great writer. I've, again, I've talked about this extensively, but I just really love it. Okay, and next up in spot number five is another one that I had not read at the time of writing the original list. This is The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins. This is probably going to be one of the top books of the year for me. I read this back in March. It follows the story of Walter Hartwright as he becomes entangled in this very complicated mystery involving Laura Fairley, an heiress, um, her half-sister Marion Halcombe, and a woman named Anne Catherick who has escaped from an insane asylum. And she is the woman white of the title. This is told from so many different points of view. And it's just so much fun. I just really enjoyed this. I'm writing a paper on it. I loved it. All 
right, so now, so now we get into the four others that were on the list originally. So I want to briefly talk about the one that got taken off of the list, which was Tess of the Durbervilles by Thomas Hardy. This is another one that I read when I was very young. I was 15 and I adored it. I had a very emotional reaction to it. I just recently finished rereading it and I still really loved it, but it wasn't quite a five star or even a four and a half star read for me as um, other books on this list were. I ultimately bumped it off the list, but again, I still did really enjoy it. And I love to hate Angel Claire even more than I love to hate Tom Tolliver. I'm gonna probably do a video of Victorian characters I love to hate at some point because boy, do I have a lot of them. Sitting at number four, and it was in number four last time as well, is North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is the story of Margaret Hale, who moves from the south of England up to the industrial town of Milton and gets involved in the mill politics that are going on there, specifically with John Thornton, who she ends up falling in love with in a very Pride and Prejudice-esque romance. I adore this. I adore it more every time I reread it. I love the miniseries. It's just so good. I've said this before, but it's like if Charles Dickens and Jane Austen teamed up to write a novel. It has the social issues that Dickens is so famous for. So showing the poverty and the bad conditions in the mills and the health problems it causes people. But then we have this great, essentially enemies to lovers romance. And I'm here for it. I love it. Next up, this has actually moved up on the list. It used to be in spot number five, and now it has taken spot number three. This is The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. I have probably talked about this before. Have I talked about this before? I don't know. This is the story of Helen Graham, who moves into Wildfell Hall and is very secretive. She's the new tenant, and the townspeople begin to get kind of suspicious of her. And she ends up giving her diary to our narrator, Gilbert Markham, so that he can see her story. And it involves her escaping from an abusive alcoholic husband, who's another character that is very hateable. Very hateable. But I adore this. It is like it has a woman running away from her husband and taking their child at a time when women couldn't get divorced. Um, divorces were extremely hard to get. They were extremely expensive and really only the man could apply for them. So if you hear weird sounds, my cat is bored and he's playing with his tail in the corner. He's not happy with me because I'm filming anyway. So this is such a powerful book and I adore it more and more each time I read it. Well, this was in spot number three in the last list, but it has now moved up to number two. And I don't think this is gonna come as much of a surprise to anybody. This is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. If you somehow live under a rock and don't know what Jane Eyre is, it follows Jane from her childhood as a neglected orphan in her aunt's house to being a governess at Thornfield Hall, where she falls in love with her employer, Mr. Rochester, but Mr. Rochester has a secret that is going to keep them from having their happy ending. What can I even say about this? I mean, I love Jane Eyre. I love Jane Eyre so much. I love her as a character. And as a narrator, she's just, she's got such a conversational voice. Reader, I married him. It's, it's just beautiful. I love the gothic sections. I just love it. I've definitely talked about it before in my like 10 best books of all time video, which I think also had a lot of Victorian literature on here. All right, and now in spot number one, and this is definitely no surprise to anybody. It is always in spot number one for any favorite books list I have. 
It has been since I was 14. This is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. <sighs> Why is Wuthering Heights my favorite book? I get asked that so much because people's reaction when I say Wuthering Heights is my favorite book is either usually, oh, I love it too, or ew, why? <laughs> and I have for so long had a difficulty explaining why do I love this book so much? I've always just said, well, it's really powerful. And it is. The, some of the statements that Emily Bronte comes out with, I am Heathcliff, you said I killed you, haunt me then, are so utterly just core shaking and amazing. But I love it for a lot more than just that. I love the narrative setup of this. We have technically two narrators. First is Mr. Lockwood, who is writing all this in a diary, but he is hearing the story from Nellie Dean, the housekeeper. But even then, a lot of Nellie Dean's story is told through things that other characters have told her. So things Isabella Linton tells her and things that Heathcliff tells her. So I love that. I guess I should say what this is about, again, in case you don't know. This is the story of two families in a neighborhood, the Earnshaws and the Lintons, and how Heathcliff, the adopted son of the Earnshaws, kind of decides he wants revenge against everyone that wronged him and ruins their lives. It goes through two generations of Heathcliff just inflicting misery, but the second generation rises from the ashes to be better. And that's another thing that I love about this story is the redemption arc that the, sem the second generation brings in, something that is left out a lot by movie adaptations because people seem to think that the main point of this book is the love story between Heathcliff and Kathy. It's not. <laughs> um, it's not at all. But the second generation comes out of abuse that they had, like, no, there was no reason for them to be inflicted with any of this. Every single one of them is abused by Heathcliff but they are able to come out of it and find love and be better, essentially. And I love that aspect of this, that the revenge does not win in the end. It's love that does, it's great. Um, the, other thing, <laughs> the other thing that I love about this, and I think this is a super underrated part of this book, is Mr. Lockwood. Now, if you're reading this, you might be like, Elizabeth, he's an idiot. Yes, he is an idiot. Okay, everybody always talks about like harsh and bleak when it comes to Wuthering Heights. Mr. Lockwood is comedic gold, okay? Okay, this guy comes into a house and asks like Catherine Linton, like, oh, are any of these dogs yours? She's like, no, these aren't mine. He goes, oh, your favorites must be among these. And he points to a bunch of dead rabbits that are on the floor because he's mistaking them for cats or something. And it is just... <laughs> he's so dumb. He's so freaking dumb. And it, it's just hilarious. It's great. I don't think that Emily Bronte is appreciated nearly enough for her comedic genius in this book because Lockwood is hilarious. All right, so I will get off my soapbox about Wuthering Heights, but yes, this is my favorite book ever, Victorian or otherwise. The love of my life. Those are my top 10 Victorian novels. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of them? What did you think? What are your top 10 Victorian novels? It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.